sports has been in my life forever and as a kid I wanted to play in the NHL, I wanted to be a professional athlete, that was always my dream. Um, so I owe so much to Wiltshire Rugby and uh, that's why I keep playing it too, so I'm not going to stop right now, <laughs> having too much fun. Hi, my name is Pico and I play Wiltshire Rugby. Um, there's a lot of things I like about rugby. Uh, I like the, the contact, I like uh, the fast, it's a fast paced game. Reminds me a little bit of hockey when I used to play. I like contact and hockey. After my accident, some of the players came into my room just to talk to me and just talk and let me know about rugby. So I went down, watched a couple of practices, but wasn't really interested at first. In my mind, I just want to, uh, you know, walk again and play hockey like I used to. But then, about a year and a half after, I realized that that wasn't possible anymore. So some players from uh, actually two from my hometown gave me a call, asked me if I want to come to a practice, and that's how I got involved. I gave a goal to myself that I want to go to the Paralympics and compete for Canada, because I heard it was a Paralympic sport. I got the good news in 2011, saying that I was uh, selected to, on, on the top 12 to go to the Paralympics. The object of the game is to try and carry the ball over the opposing team's goal. Now teams have 12 seconds to pass half court and 40 seconds to score. And while they're trying to do that, they're being constantly ran by the other team who's trying to get the shot clock to expire. Think that sounds difficult? Well, that's what makes it one of the most popular Paralympic sports. There was thousands and thousands of people applauding us and people we don't even know, but they're being emotional just seeing us. You know, it's, it, it, it's just uh, great to see that we, we, it's a hard work to go to the Paralympics and win a medal, but it's worth it because you do it for, for your friends, for your community, for, you know, for the whole country. London is a long way away from Embrun, the tiny town where Pico lives. Ten years ago, on a construction site not far from here, an accident would mark the uncertain beginnings of Pico's wheelchair rugby career. I was 18 years old when I got injured. My dad owns a uh, construction, construction company. We build houses. So I was working for him and I was on this, one morning I was the second floor of a house and I fell into the stairway hole. Um, the reason I fell, it was the hole was covered with sheets of plywood and I had to work over it. So I had to take the, the sheets somewhere else, put them somewhere else. I don't know, I, just, I guess I was daydreaming or something. So I picked up the first sheet of plywood to put it away, didn't look down, just took a step and fell in, this, in, this, in this, the hole. The first floor wasn't covered, the hole in the first floor. So I fell from the second to the first to the basement. So I fell on my back, my head hit the floor and I fractured, fractured the six vertebrae in my neck and damaged my spinal cord. So definitely like at 18 years old, when you start to be independent and you know, you, just, you start, you're driving, uh, you know, you're in college, you go out a lot and then everything, you know, ends in a matter of a second. It, it's tough for anyone to, to deal, to deal with. When we were younger, uh, I had a lot of kids my age, you know, doing a lot of sports in the summer. We would, you know, meet at 10 a.m. in the summer and play hockey in the streets or baseball. And he would, he would always follow us. So I, I think that's why early on we could see he was a pretty good athlete because he was always playing against guys two or three years older than him. We never talked to each other about the accident or how he felt about it. It's just not who we are. And even today, 10 years afterwards, we've never had a discussion about that. But uh, I remember, well, I got the call at, uh, I think, 7 a.m. I was with my mother at my house, and, you know, some of the construction guys, sometimes they're, you know, they're not, I don't want to say they're not intelligent guys, but they're construction guys, and they, they can't really express their feelings, and they just told us that Petris fell. So I told my mother, she says, well, do you want to go? Or, but no, no indication of what was happening. Uh, never told us that the helicopter was flying in from Ottawa. So I said, I'm not going to go because he's going to say, what are you doing here and stuff like that because I know the way he is. He doesn't want any help. And, but I don't know why. I just said, okay, I'm going to go. So when I got there, like I said, I saw the helicopter. And then that's why I realized, whoa, if, it's got to be something bad. So when I got to the, uh, the house that they were working on and I saw him in the basement lying uh, back on his back, and uh, I just asked him, what can you move? And he says, no, nothing. So I knew right away that it was bad. And I remember him telling me two, three years after the accident, I think it was three years afterwards, he says, one day you wake up and you, know, you forget that you were walking one day. This is my uh, silver medal here. It's very nice, kind of heavy too. 
hopefully the next one will have the, the will be a gold in Brazil. But uh, this is my first one, and uh, hopefully my not my last one. Back in 1981, a quadriplegic by the name of Bill Powell he came to me with this new uh, sport that had been developed in Winnipeg a couple of years earlier called murder ball. And I didn't know anything about it. I read the pamphlet. He said, well, you should start with this in your sports program. So I did, and it never stopped. There was um, a real sense of development of their um, independence. So they were all quite independent individuals coming into it playing murder ball. But, um, Having been involved in competitions with other teams and seeing what other people could do elsewhere who'd been involved for a while before us made them want to be more competitive. My name is uh, Kevin McEwen. I've been playing wheelchair rugby for uh, approximately 10 years. Uh, my favorite part of the sport is the camaraderie, uh, the support that you get from all these guys uh, is uh, second to none. Uh, you can, they always got your back. My favorite part of the sport is that it's really a thinking game. you got to keep thinking ahead two or three plays all the time. The best thing about rugby is smoking the hits. My name is Ben Perkins. Perkins. And I love I the sport just right. because of the physical contact. The, Smashing the chairs it just makes it worth playing. The thing I like most about wheelchair rugby is able to compete throughout the world. I've always been a guy that is very competitive, and whatever I do in school, at work, I, I try to do it 100%. I might not be as, as happy as I am today if it wasn't for rugby, but I'm sure I'd be, I'd be all right.